Welcome to Digital Asset News, take the top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and bring them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, we've got some bullish stories with a twist. First up, Bitcoin could hit $1 million, says the CEO of CoinFund. We're going to take a look at what he's talking about and how that might be a little bit out there. Also, billionaires are essentially FOMOing into Bitcoin. We're going to take a look at why that actually is and a little piece from Bloomberg Opinion, which tells you to stay away from Bitcoin and why I think they're not too far off. And lastly, I need to answer the question, which is the elephant in the room is, am I still dollar cost averaging or DCAing as the price of Bitcoin goes to all time highs or is there a new strategy? And we'll get into all that and take a look at the markets, but first we gotta do some giveaways. 12 days of Christmas are upon us, thankfully great stuff. Also, I want to give a big shout out to Alex Maschioli for taking over the channel for a little bit. We had talked about this a little bit ago just to see if we could uh, pull it off. And it's it's uh, nice to switch things up and uh, maybe in another year or so I'll do another thing. <laughs> I'm not really uh, big on switching too many things up. But I thought it was appropriate, especially for the holiday time. So hope you enjoyed it. I liked Alex's perspective as far as the institutions, because he talks to all those people and I don't. So it's just interesting to hear just another viewpoint from the thousand bird's eye view. Anyhow, so Alex was talking about today about giving away a Trade the Chain membership. And the thing about Trade the Chain is, to me, it's like the trifecta. You've got the, the FA, TA, and SA. Well, what the heck is that? Well, the FA is a fundamental analysis. That's kind of what we do here. We talk about the stories that are going on, what's going on in the world of cryptocurrency, the news, and of course, all the hype. The TA is, of course, the technical analysis, which I don't get too much into, but the geniuses over there at Market Rebellion talk about it, and it makes a lot of sense, and they use both. And Alex here has brought us in the third perspective, and that is the sentiment analysis analysis. And that kind of takes a look at what is really going on behind the scenes, the social media, the hype, the tweets, the blog posts, all those little details that really, in my opinion, is what is being a big factor for this entire market. I believe it's emotion. Me and Alex are on the same wavelength, and that's why I created Trade the Chain. So we're going to give away a free membership today. So let's just jump right over into the video that Alex did. And I'll do this quite easily. All I'm going to do is I'm going to swing down a couple of swipes and then bop, stop. David Wahlberg, congratulations. You have just won a free Trade the Chain membership. And let me swing down a couple more times. Bop, 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 stop. And Martin Safi. Congratulations, you are our second winner for Trade the Chain. So David and Mateen, if you could just do me a favor, go over to danteachescrypto.com, click on the contact tab right there, fill out the form, uh, which is just a contact form, and we will send over, actually Alice will send over, your free membership to Trade the Chain. All right, let's jump into today's markets. So what we got? Well, we got uh, Bitcoin almost hitting 24,000. That's what happened. It, it's gone down a little bit. Uh, we're at 22.6, but phew, fantastic run, but there has to be a little bit of a pullback. And I know everybody's saying, but this is different. It's going to keep going. No, it's not. It's not. It does not go all the way up all the time. So we, we hit 21 and then 22. And I was monitoring my Twitter account as I usually do. And it was just like, oh, we're going 25, we're going 27, 30,000, 50,000 by the end of the year. I'm like, whoa, 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 slow your roll. It's not this game is played. I don't see 50,000 in play by the end of the year. I could be wrong. But uh, here we are with a little bit of pullback, even though it is up 8%. But again, fantastic run. Won't take anything away from it. This is great news for all of us. Ethereum at 644. Wow, that's pretty good. 13% uh, for the week. XRP, watch out. A whole whopping 60 cents. Wow. Tether, Litecoin, 13%. Bitcoin Cash. You know what? What's down? Cardano? Pfft, Cardano's down for some reason. All right, sure. Binance Coin. All right. 0 0.4. I mean, not much. That's a stable coin. No, whatever. And uh, yeah, pretty much it. So pretty good run thus far. Let's see what happens throughout the week. Now let's take a look at if we had just invested into Bitcoin by switching over to Bitcoin. That's pretty simple. And let's see if, uh, if we just would have invested into the King Crypto, how we would have done. Well, with XRP, we would have actually uh, been down. We should have invested in XRP and but up a whopping 5%. 3.8 for Litecoin and uh, uh, yeah, that's about it. So that's the big thing. Uh, a lot of times when you just invest in Bitcoin, it's great and uh, you know things go up. However, there's been chatter of the altcoin season. When is that going to come? I have no idea. And nobody really does. They can give you a lot of good guesses, but I don't know. But this is exactly what happened in 2017. Bitcoin popped off first and then boom, off we went for the altcoins. Now, do I think we are in the parabolic bull run like when we did in uh, December 2017? No, I do not. 
I think 2021 is going to be the real fireworks. This is just a warm-up. So everybody just calm down. This isn't the first rodeo. Let's see where it all goes. But let's jump into today's top story. So this is a good quick follow-up piece from Bloomberg Technology. Uh, they had on the uh, CEO of CoinFund. And CoinFund, if you don't know, it's a uh, blockchain technology investment fund. Uh, started around 2015 in Brooklyn, New York. And they invest in venture and liquid opportunities within the blockchain sector. Great. So we know where their legion lies. And what they're going to talk about was the, the actual CIO of Guggenheim, which we had covered yesterday, where uh, this was uh, Scott Minard. He had talked about how Bitcoin was going to go to 400000 That's what they believed. And on top of that, they have been investing into Bitcoin since... It was at 10,000, which is always interesting to me. All these industries are like, oh, yeah, now we're into it. Well, where were you before, guys, when uh, everything was going down? Oh, we were buying it when you suckers were selling. <laughs> That's what I think is really going on. So yeah, it, was, it was a good piece, a good information. So it just kind of reinstills the fact that institutions are here. But what Gens is saying is that he's going to shock the world right now with a little prediction. So I want you to take a listen to it. And before I even play it, I'm just gonna say, take this with a grain of salt. And we're gonna go over this in detail in a little bit. So just take a listen. Well, Seth, I mean, you talk about the big money managers. One of the biggest out there is of course Guggenheim and they've been putting mm -hmm. through the desire to be able to buy crypto into some of their funds. We actually spoke with Scott Minard earlier all to do with the Federal Reserve, but he came out with this eye-watering, eye-popping sort of viewpoint on where crypto is going. Just take a listen. Uh, we made the decision to start allocating toward Bitcoin uh, when Bitcoin was at 10,000. Um, it's, it's a little more challenging uh, with the current price closer to 20,000. Uh, amazing, you know, over a very short period of time how big of a run-up we've had. Um, but having said that, uh, our, our fundamental work shows that Bitcoin uh, should be worth about $400,000. Like, uh, yeah, talk, talk to us about that 400000 figure. How quickly does he get there, Seth? Well, you, you know, the way we're thinking about it, and, and my involvement in Bitcoin started in 2012 and, and CoinFund was founded in 2015, the, the way we're thinking about it is if you look at kind of the, the pattern recognition of Bitcoin's four-year cycles, 150 to 250,000 looks like the base case. But here's the thing. It's becoming an institutional asset class this cycle. And that strikes me as being analogous to, you know, my background is in equities. When Tesla stepped up from the 25 to $35 range up to 150 to 350, and then it consolidated for a while, I think we could actually pull forward the next cycle, mm. see Bitcoin go to 500,000 to a million, and then probably consolidate wow. for a few years in that range. Yeah. But, but I think we could actually get there in the 21, 22 timeframe. First, I'm going to ask you a question. If we went to 150,000, would anybody be upset? Would you be upset if Bitcoin had 150,000 in 2021 or 2022? Would you be upset if it had 100,000 and altcoins also followed it? I wouldn't. I don't think I'd have a problem with that whatsoever. So what I'm going to say next, um, take that also with a grain of salt. But you have to understand there's a reason why a lot of people who are so heavy into Bitcoin are giving these price predictions. First of all, it's because they have a lot of it. So when you have a lot of an asset, you want that asset to do good because you are invested into it, whether that be emotionally, financially, or both. So with Gin here, he's going to talk about how he can definitely see it. Well, of course he could probably see it because he got a ton of it. There is no difference between this gentleman right here and when you see a bunch of the gold bugs going, you know what? Gold can do pretty well. It can do pretty great because again, they have a lot of it. Now, the technicals are a little bit different. I think Bitcoin is far superior to gold in a lot of different aspects. Portability being, portability being one of them, decentralized being the second. Also, it's programmable money. I can go on and on. It doesn't matter. But yes, but you have to understand this is what is going on. So when you hear these types of predictions, do not start to think like, oh, it's going to a million, it's going to a million. Calm down, take a step back. I'm gonna take you down memory lane real quick, follow me. So I'm gonna start off with the biggest scammer of all, and his name is John McAfee. And unfortunately, or fortunately, however you wanna look at it, John was the one is why I pretty much got into cryptocurrency, because I got in around October, November, 2017, and I heard this prediction, I'm like, wow, John McAfee, I know that guy, he's a great guy, he makes that great software, fantastic, and he's thinking a million, he's a smart guy, I'll follow him. Well, guess what, he never believed it. And he was a big shill and everything else, now he's in jail somewhere, awaiting arraignment, I don't know. 
So he made these predictions probably because he had a lot of Bitcoin. And then also he got into a lot of different other business dealings with other cryptocurrencies and took a lot of money from them. And then all of a sudden those cryptocurrencies were awesome. That's just the start. Also, here's another great price prediction. This is from Pomp. I like Pomp. I like his show. I watch his show. He gives predictions. Why does he give his predictions? Probably because he looks at fundamentals and a lot of different factors. And he's not a god. No one's a god. No one can really just pull out these numbers out of thin air and be like, this is definitely what it's going to be because no one's got a crystal ball. So here was his price prediction in 2019. Bitcoin will hit 100 grand. Ether will hit 3,000. Litecoin 2,500. And XRP will hit 10. That didn't happen. So as a matter of fact, Ethereum hit a 140, Litecoin is 44, and the price of XRP was just about 20 cents. And I could use my favorite joke, XRP is pay to the quarter. <laughs> Can't use that, which sucks. Now let's move forward. Here's some great predictions in 2020. Timothy Peterson, manager of Cane Island Alternative, he said that 75,000 would be happening relatively soon. And this was on June 8th. Of course, it didn't do that. It actually went down to $9,100. Moving down, I don't know who the other guy is. I don't care. Thomas Lee. This guy is a huge Bitcoin bull, best a lot into it. He said that Bitcoin will see almost a 200% gain on February 5th because of a break of the 200 moving average. And guess what happened? It didn't go up, it went down by 40%. Of course, this is in March, and these are the things that happened, especially with the everything that happened globally. And then he had a prediction before that, which said that it would be 91,000 by March of 2020, and that didn't happen. So when I hear these types of predictions, I want to be wrong. I want it to go to a million. Believe me, I want, I mean, why wouldn't I want, I want it to go to a million dollars, but I've been around long enough to where I've seen, I've heard a lot of predictions and some come true and some don't. And I just take a look back at history because I need to know where I'm going. If I want to know where I'm going, I got to know where I've been and that's where I've been. So to take a little bit deeper dive into that, let's jump forward.